All right, here is your Christmas Eve fit tip. Don't do cardio until you figure out your calorie balance. Oh, okay. I was like, what happened here? Yeah. So think about that for a second. This is, I brought this up on the show. um, You mean like your maintenance caloric? That's right. Okay. Like, so it's the, it's the last thing that I want to introduce to any client, no matter what. With that hat, it just makes me laugh right now. (laughs) (laughs) It's just kidding. Every time it makes a point, it like just jingles. What's wrong, Scrooge? (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anti-festive guy. It's Christmas Eve right now. How could you not be Santa Claus out right now? All right, all right, all right. All right, sorry. Keep going. So the. We're grinching it. All right, yeah. go for it. Bum, so, humbug. So you're, you're talking about maintenance, like you're trying to figure out your maintenance calories. Do that before you Well before. And I don't even, and I think you should you should have introduced training consistently. I think you should have played with your diet up and down and uh, a while and kind of have built some consistency around, okay, I know that on average, these days of the week, I burn about this much. My body needs about this much with no cardio involved whatsoever before you even think about introducing that into it. No matter what your goal is. I don't care even if your goal is just yeah. longevity, overall health, if you, and for sure if you are trying to burn body fat or build muscle, to figure out your, your caloric maintenance without that introduced yeah. So into you have your routine. home base established. Right. Now, is this, out. does yeah. this include like walking or you mean structured cardio? Structured cardio. Okay. And I, and <clears throat> now that's a big difference because, uh, you know, adding, a, you know, some walks throughout the day, very good for you. Very different than the structured form of cardio. Well, that's where- because I, with, with, Adding walks in the day, the idea of that concept of, you know, creating more movement and, you know, like we, you know, uh, advocate for 10 to 15 minute walks post eating and stuff like that. When we re- when we recommend that, that isn't like, hey, just do that till you get to your goal. That's trying to get people to do that for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Where telling someone to get on a treadmill and get after it for an hour, uh, you know, first thing in the morning or at the end of the day for three times or five times a week. That is not uh, a realistic uh, thing for someone to do for the rest of their life. Now, uh, of course, there's exceptions to the rule. There's someone that's listening right now. I've been doing that for 15 years. I love it. Okay, they sound just like that, too. Right. Okay. <laughs> good Good for you. The rest of everybody else, though, mm-hmm. probably hates doing that. And before you get on it and decide you're going to use that as a method of burning more calories, you should have a very good grasp of what your body needs without it and what it needs to what it needs calorie wise to lose body fat potentially without introducing it before you decide to introduce it into now, your Now I'll go um, pro and then con. I think the pro is it's it's great cuz you want to know what your maintenance caloric um, balance is I guess so that when you add anything to it now you know you're adding to whatever your body's burning. Um, and saving cardio as a secret weapon later on is really effective. I've done that also with clients before. I think it's really effective. Now, the con would be discouraging someone from, you know, in, just increasing their activity and they're like, well, I want to do it and I enjoy it. And some, you know, what I don't, what I think that maybe the potential con is that we may be talking people out of doing something that may be good for them. Agreed. So then mm. my, my middle ground on that for that person is go for a walk then. Mm. You know, if you if you just you're motivated right now to move more, you recognize you have a very sedentary lifestyle. Maybe someone got you a Fitbit for Christmas this year. You put it on, realize your ass doesn't move more than a fucking thousand steps a day. Yeah, you should be moving. And I wouldn't tell that person don't move until you figure all this. Go ahead, okay, go ahead, go move. But again, be very careful with how you do that because if you are somebody who's extremely sedentary, you don't move more than five hundred to a thousand steps a day, and then you decide as your first plan of action is I'm going to get on the treadmill for an hour every single day. I don't think that's a smart strategy. That's like four times the movement you are consistently doing. And now you're going to just implement that into your routine. Yeah. Go for a walk. And then when you go try to to cut calories to lose weight, uh, it's uh, it's a bit skewed, right? That's because, right. Yeah. Well, I think the, the, the biggest thing to focus on for most people's goals, which is weight loss, is to focus on getting the metabolic rate to increase on its own. Because that's a very sustainable approach, right? So if you you know build some muscle, that'll boost your metabolism. Cardiovascular activity doesn't really do that. In some cases, actually slows the met- metabolism down. It's the opposite. It's yeah. catabolic. Yeah, and 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 so it's not. It's manual. It's a manual form of calorie burn versus yeah. speeding up your metabolism. So. I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Well, you, in that context, well, though, let's talk a little bit yeah. why that is such a bad idea. Yeah. You, uh, we, okay, we've talked on the show many times that one of the, the first things that we do with a client, even if there's somebody who's 50, 100 pounds overweight, 
is to start to build their metabolism up. Well, i.e., that means increase calories and, and strength train. That doesn't mean also do cardio. And why wouldn't I also do cardio while doing that? Well, it's because it's a conflicting message. Mm. One of them is anabolic. One of them is catabolic. One of them is pro-building muscle. The other one is pro-breaking yeah. down. So I wouldn't want to try and compete with that originally. Yeah, this is, a, this is a very controversial subject because people misconstrue what you're saying as cardio is unhealthy. Right. It's not mm. true. What, what, uh, I think what we're saying is if your overall strategy is long-term success, the number one thing you should probably focus on is let's see if I can get my metabolism to burn more on its own. And what, what cardio does when it's done up by itself, especially with calorie restriction, is your body, and the studies support this, your body will pare muscle down to kind of offset that, that imbalance. And so you end up with a metabolism that's more efficient, which is slower. And again, there's a study from the modern hunter-gatherers that showed just how efficient your metabolic rate can get. And by the way, I know somebody's going to get on, especially YouTube, and, oh, here's a study that shows that yeah. a pound of muscle only burns this much, and da, da, da. Okay. It's, it's far more complex than that. There's a range of calories that your body will burn with the current lean body mass that you have. Okay? So even without adding lean body mass or losing lean body mass, your body can become more or less efficient with your current lean body mass. Now, what moves it more or less efficient has to do with the signals you send it, how you feed your body, stress, lots of hormones, for example. For example, you could give someone uh, testosterone who have low testosterone, and you'll see a, a boost in metabolic rate. That happens before the boost in lean body mass tends to happen. You'll see it start to trend in that direction. So what you want to do is you want to get the metabolism to kind of move a little faster because if a faster metabolism definitely was a liability 10,000 years ago. You don't want to have a fast metabolism when it was so hard to come by food. Today, it's the opposite. A fast metabolism is an asset. A slow metabolism is a liability. So it's a great strategy. And uh, I, don't, I mean, I've, I've done this before where I've taken a client, gotten them to lose 20 pounds, and they were eating more at the end of that journey right. than yeah. they were going into it, which it's usually not that way. Usually someone loses 30, 20 pounds or 30 pounds, and they're eating way less than they had to, than they started with, and now they're stuck with this kind of low calorie. Well, meeting. I like this advice uh, mainly because it's, it's contrary to what people think. And um, a lot of times when I have uh, conversations with clients and their entire goal is weight loss, and I like to bring up their activity levels and just where they're at with that and, and getting them to figure that out as far as a lifestyle and addressing, you know, what their rituals are and what their yeah. entire day looks like versus like getting a uh, artificial uh, type of uh, manufactured way of moving, it, you know, in terms of that sticking within like your daily routine. It's so much, it's so much more effective. I found with human behavior to find those, those moments to just like stand more to, to just yeah. walk a little bit farther. Like, and, and you just find like, more of those type of uh, uh, approaches uh, throughout the day. Yep. Uh, it, it's just so much more of a, a winning strategy. And so I like to focus more on that because people aren't hearing that. It's definitely a winning strategy. This is, I mean, sometimes this science community is so stupid because we look at everything in this six week, you know, study. So if you took these, if you took two people that were both need to lose the same weight, say, let's just say same everything, right? Yeah, I love where you're going with this. I right. And you go that. and you let you say, all right, Client A, we're doing cardio. Right out the gates, you're doing an hour every single day. Plus, plus cardio, some, plus weights. Yeah, plus, plus weights. Plus they're gonna, and then the other person, I go, no cardio whatsoever. All we're going to focus on is building strength and muscle right now for the first six weeks. At the end of that six weeks, if, if their goal was ultimately to lose weight, the client that introduced cardio is going to win. Yeah. But the problem is life is longer than fucking six weeks. <laughs> yeah. So now let's take those exact same people and give me a year with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you the person that I spent the first six weeks focusing on building their metabolism, building muscle, not doing any cardio versus the person who was doing it right out gates. I'm going to I'm going to whoop the shit here, out of that person. Here is all the and I'm going to yes. I'm going to eat more with this person so they're going to be more satisfied yep. and they're going to get better results faster in a 6 month year time. So yeah. that's the reason why this gets so I think so muddied up because there's these little studies that show stuff in a 6 week or maybe 12 week like time frame which that doesn't that doesn't speak to life. No, and this is right. why the medical community will still recommend uh, liquid diets. You know, and this study showed, oh my oh, god, yeah. they lost the most amount yeah. of weight. So here's here's the 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 argument. I'm so glad you positioned it that way. That's totally true. What we when, what we're talking about, and what we always consider first, is sustainability. We're not talking about just, uh, in other words, the context of effectiveness. When we talk about what's most effective, sustainability is at the top of the list. 
when you hear a bodybuilder or fitness influencer or fitness fanatic or scientist in the space talk about effectiveness, what they talk about is what's the most effective right now, right? Which one gets you to lose the most weight right now, right? And they don't consider sustainability. It's not a consideration. So yes, you, you're going to find YouTube ex bodybuilders and whatever you know get on. There's one guy in particular who likes to go on talk about how you know that's a bad message. A little short ex bodybuilder guy. Not going to say his name, but you know who he is now. And he likes to talk about this all the time. And the problem is he's con his context of effectiveness is not sustainability. Mm. His context of effectiveness is what he did as a bodybuilder, which is oh, in in 12 weeks you'll lose more weight. Well, yeah, it's true. But who cares? I don't care. I care about sustainability. And, and look, as a trainer who, who worked with just everyday average people all the time, the first five years of my career was the, my context of effectiveness was how fast can you lose the weight you know, in, in a short period of time. Later on, I had to go back and go, that was a complete, that, the way that I understood effectiveness was so wrong. I did none of my clients uh, It's because it was value. coming, just like this guy you're referring to, it's coming from the 1%. The perspective yeah. of the 1%. So the way I coach uh, competitors and talk to competitors totally different. is totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're the one percent. They're like they're that's their sport. They're fanatical about it. This is not a this isn't a matter of like sustainability. This is a matter of like I got this amount of time. Nobody cares. It's the show. After yeah. the show, do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. So like speaking to that, and that's so funny to me when you see these, you know, YouTube famous people that like people you're referring to that are giving advice to the masses. A million plus subscribers pay attention to them. I guarantee the million plus people who are paying attention to them, ninety percent of them are not bodybuilders, yeah. are not competitors. Competitors, they're average people looking for advice, and they see this body that looks amazing, uh -huh. and they and they aspire to look like that, and so they're taking the advice of this person. You know, what it reminds me of. Yeah. It reminds me of, and there's a few people like this, like these. Uh, I don't know what you want to call them, business influencers, right? How to make a lot of money, influencers or whatever, and they'll say charlatans. Things, yeah, and they'll say stuff like this, like you just gotta grind all day long. Barely sleep, work twenty four seven, make it. And there's like a small percentage of the population that can do that, like the twenty something year old, no kids, who's whatever. But to the average person listening to that, like, okay, uh, that's not going to work. I can't do that. How long can I do that? Yeah, what kind of advice can you give me that's going to help me with sustainable, you know, business success? Because that option I can do for sixty days, but then after that, it ain't it ain't going to happen. It's the same thing with this. So if you have to consider sustain, unless you don't, you're not thinking about long term success. If you don't care. You're like, yeah. look, I want to get in shape for Vegas. Yeah, so then, your horse blinders on. You want to yeah. look a certain way and do it as quick as possible. We're not the show for you. Yeah, and then after that, I'm done. I don't care what happens after Vegas. I don't care what you know if my legs fall off or <laughs> yeah. I you know, gain 45 pounds. Yeah, just get me in shape for Vegas. In which case, I'll say, well, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna handcuff you to the treadmill. <laughs> You're gonna eat chicken <laughs> breast and rice, and then oh, you yeah. know we're gonna take all these drugs. Beat make the shit it, out of yourself. Make Go you look it. a particular way. So. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.